Aaron doesn't play better. He throws in a stinker uh, like he threw in last week or like played like he's been playing thus far this year. This thing can get out of hand early. The Cowboys are a better team and have a much, much better defense than what they went up against last week in the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions give up the most points in the game, 32. They give up the most yards in the game. The Cowboys are far, far from that, Skip. They have one of the best defenses and one of the best, if not the best, defensive player currently playing in 2022. Agreed. There's also uncertainty about David Bakhtiar's status and Elgin, Elginton Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, Skip, if, if, if these guys don't play, you already offensive line isn't as good as we thought it was going to be because two guys are coming off injury. We know Jenkins tore his knee last year. Bakhtiari coming off an ACL two years ago. Oh, Aaron actually tried to throw him a touchdown pass <laughs> the other day. Maybe, and maybe that was going to make him feel good. <laughs> Cowboy, the first in sack, first in pass, pass rush win rate. Yep. And percentage of pressure. They are. So they can get after your quarterback. Mm -hmm. Now, offensively, Dak is starting to play a little better. They're starting to diversify their offense. They're not pass, pass heavy, heavy as they once were. They're running the football with Pollard. Zeke, we don't know if he's going to get come back just yet, Skip. He might, might not play. But I still believe, even with that being said, I believe the Cowboys have the much better team. Team. Now, this is the first time that we can say, Skip, the Cowboys have a better offense than what the Green Bay Packers have. I understand who and what Aaron Rodgers is, but he's currently not playing like that. And so with me, I, for, for me, I'm going to take the Cowboys 27-13. Uh, Skip, the Cowboys have sacked the opposing quarterback at least four times in four straight games. The one thing they can do defensively <clears throat> is get after your quarterback. Yep. And another thing that they can do, if the ball touches their hands, they come down with it. That is true. Trayvon Diggs, I mean, now it seems to be contagious because now the ball pops up in there and somehow all of a sudden the Cowboys, they got, they got 15 guys on the field because somebody's sliding up under the mm -hmm. catcher. The ball hits the dirt. Cowboys pouncing on it, or they're scooping and scoring. Agreed. And so with that, Skip, I'm going to take the Cowboys. I think they win convincingly. I th and this is not a game that you can really send a message. Now, if Green Bay was the Green Bay that we thought they would be, you go up there and you dismantle them, you send a message. You might send a little message, but I don't think people have Green Bay in the same circles as they once had them. Hmm. But the Cowboys, I believe, are starting to head in the right direction, run the football, don't ask Dak to throw it 35, 40 times in a game. And then, like I said, and plus Aaron Jones is dinged a little bit. So how effective is their running game going to be? And can they keep the Wolves off the sheet? Mm. I don't know. So I'm going 27-13 Cowboys. So the Hall of Famer, Shannon Sharp, says that my defense will go up to Lambeau Field yeah. and hold Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Bleepin Rodgers, the transcendent thrower of the football that at least he used to be, to 13 points. That would be an achievement because I'm going to remind you last year about this time, mm -hmm. my defense went up. This is when they really started to arrive. They went up to Arrowhead and held my homeboy at home to 19. And yes. I thought that was impressive. Yes. But, but if they hold Aaron to 13. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think Aaron, I think Aaron, I think, I think Arrowhead is a much tougher place to play than Lambeau. And I also believe, Skip, mm -hmm. your defense is better now than it was then. I'll buy that. I'll buy everything you just said. I would love to co-sign on everything you just said. I'm not reverse jinxing. I'm not trying to doomsay. I'm not trying to poor mouth. I'm just t I'm speaking my heart right now. I am scared to death of Aaron Rodgers on the frozen tundra. It won't really be frozen. It'll no, be chilly, scared. but it won't be. You, you're scared of the allure okay. of uh, what uh, Aaron Rodgers has been. Okay. You, you might say what he used to be, but... I do think he was correct when he said we went up and down the field against Detroit. Well, they have the worst defense in pro football yes. because they just came to our place and we went up and down the field on them. Right. And by the way, we got back-to-back -back home games against, wait a second, Detroit and Chicago. Right. I'll take that for Dak's return. Right. He could ease back into correct. the fray. Biggest picture point, if you think my offense is better than their offense, this is a huge test for Dak Prescott. Yeah. This is you have to go up there and outscore Aaron Rodgers. I think he's going to score considerably more points than you think. Right. I think it's going to be higher scoring up toward 30. Really? Yes, I do. In fact, I wanted to call it 31 to 30 Dallas. I'll, I'll go 31 to 28. I, I believe that Aaron Rodgers can score 28 on my defense just because he always has. <laughs> he loves to play against Dallas. We'll get into the deeper reasons, the, the deeper motivations right. there. We, we're going to do another big topic on this. But my point is, I, 
I'm about to show you chapter and verse of what, uh, of what he's done to us. And maybe it's past tense. I hope it's past tense. But what a sweet spot for him and what a dangerous spot for us because dirt is being shoveled on his grave. I, I tried to keep up with every prediction I could find. Right. I can't find one prognosticator in the media who gives Green Bay any shot in this game. Yeah, yeah. USA Today, today they come out with their, their sort of the, the we, board yeah, of all their pro it. prognosticators. Mm -hmm. So they go six across yeah. and everybody, all six picked Dallas. Right. Everybody's picking Dallas. It's almost too good to be true because I'm going to remind you, Aaron still has his top two targets. His favorite, Lazard and Tanyan, are healthy and are going to play. Right. He still has those two kids who can fly, Christian Watson and that Toure, that they run by people constantly. He has not been able to get the ball to them or they have dropped it. Correct. But, but they can run. He still has Sammy Watkins. You don't have much respect, but he, he's been in a lot of big games in his career, and I don't doubt he'll catch four or five balls this Sunday. Okay. And Aaron Jones has been a cowboy killer for years. Yes. He's dinged. Yes. He's got an ankle, but they said he's limited in practice, but he hopes to be able to right. play. Yeah, I think he'll play against Dallas because he loves to play against Dallas. And A.J. Dillon is just a flat-out sledgehammer yeah. against a defense <clears throat> that has had one vulnerability. It's not great at stopping the run. It's been pretty good here and there. And then sometimes I look up and say, wait a second, what just <laughs> happened? Yeah. That just happened. You gave well, away, what did you give up, 240? I mean, you just gave up 240 to the Bears. That's correct. It, but Bears run on everybody. So okay, they do. That quarterback <laughs> runs on everybody because he's starting to look like Eric Dickerson to me. <laughs> Okay, here's the point about Aaron Bleepin' Rodgers. If, if I can just run you quickly through what he's done against my franchise, yeah. I don't count the first game because it was only his third game starting after he sat for three years behind Brett Favre. And by the way, we had owned Brett Favre in the playoffs. We beat him three straight years. I, was your brother playing? Yep. Yeah, your brother's mm -hmm. playing those games. But we went 93, 4, and 5. We, we beat Aaron. They're all at Texas Stadium. But we beat, I mean, I beat uh, Brett. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. We beat him like a drum. We owned him. And then here came his successor. Right. So I'm not going to count the first one. My team ran for 217 that day at Lambeau. But here he came the next year. Aaron beat us 17 to 7. Then the next year, Aaron beat us 45 to 7 at Lambeau. And then you remember the catch game or the, <laughs> it's, it's like not the Dwight, it's the uncatch game, not right. the Dwight Clark one. It was the Des Bryant one when Des caught it. And again, they were ahead 26 to 21. If we could just remind everybody of what this was, because it was obviously a catch, even though Shannon Sharp. It was not it a up. catch. Stop saying well, that. We just got to just remind just everybody. Just because you keep saying it happened. was a catch, it this doesn't make it a catch. Fourth and two. So this is for all the marbles with about four minutes left. He catches it. He runs a couple steps with it. One, two, three, and he slams it in his left hand because he's left handed on the goal line for a touchdown. Ref raises his hand, touchdown. Mike McCarthy, somebody wakes him up on the sideline. He throws the red challenge <laughs> flag that he used to wipe his nose. And you know what happened. It got overturned and we lost. But let me show you what Aaron did to us down the stretch because we still had a chance to stop him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I knew you were going to lose the game regardless. They killed the clock because if I could show you third and three, this is third and three at the 40-yard line. If we have this, this is to some kid named Devontae. I'd never even heard of him before. That's to Devonte Adams, and he bursts loose because he's a beast. You could already see it there. And all he did was get 26 yards on that play. And then it becomes third and 11 at the third down at the 35-yard line. There goes Devonte, and third and 11. If we stop it, we're going to hold him to a 53-yard field goal attempt. And he throws a little pop pass out to guess who? Cobb, Cobb, Randall little Cobb. Cobb, little Randall Cobb, and he catches it for 12 yards. That's all they needed. Right. And it's a ball game because that just killed the rest of the clock. Right. They didn't even need to kick the field goal, and they won 26 to 21. Right. Okay. So then we we come to the the game at Lambo. Oh, they they beat us 28 to seven the next year. Then we we got the next game at Lambo, which was the Hello World game with Dak and Zeke as rookies. Right. They go up there and beat him. Remember, he was limping on a bad calf muscle, but we beat him 30 to 16. And I thought we finally broke the Dracula curse that he has over <laughs> us. And he comes right back to, to Jerry World in a playoff game. This is January 15th of 2017. And I, I look up, and before I can even catch my breath, it's 21 to 3 Aaron Rodgers. Yep, Remember that? I do. And Dak 
battles his butt off, comes all the way back to 31 all. And then if we could remember the one play, it's third and 20 at their 32-yard line. Third and 20 at their 32. We got him trapped. <laughs> There's run, no hope. And he dash on little, you. little left, little left dash. And he's looking and he's waiting and we don't pressure him. And Jared Cook comes all the way no across the field, all the way across the field. And then this ended up just being pitch and catch up the sideline. That's pretty easy because we're playing prevent with three DBs back on the 20 yard right. line. That sets up a 51 yard field goal. And I've never seen a ball do this before. <laughs> if you can help me out on this, this is Mason Crossbar. He hooks it off his foot. It's hooking left. And then all of a sudden it starts to fade right. Have you ever seen a hook slice field goal? I haven't. Yeah, I wish the Salvation okay. Army keg was back there so okay. it went in that kettle. <laughs> well, it might have just hit it because <laughs> I called it the hand of God. It might have been the hand of Dracula because I think Brett, uh, that Aaron Rodgers has been our Dracula. But Skip, here's the thing. You showed all those guys. Lazard is not Devontae. No. And that okay. was eight years okay. ago. Randall Cobb was a lot younger. Okay. And all those games that they won, you yep. look at who they look at the receivers they had. The Jordy Nelsons. The guys okay. like that. The great I don't know if Greg Jennings was there at that time, but you look at Jennings and you look at Jordy Nelson. Okay. You look I at Devontae. It. They don't have that now. Okay, I got it. And then I'm gonna finish off. So then the next year after that third and twenty play, they, they, they came right.